Hi on YouTube, I'm the Toffman and welcome to a brand new FM17 experiment today. We're going to be seeing how Malta do when you give them a hundred million pounds per team every season. Now, the way that you can do this guys is in the editor, it's the advanced editor you've got to use and you can go ahead and you can change the amount of TV money that uh, teams receive at the start of the season. I've gone ahead into Malta's Premier League and I've given every team a hundred million pounds every single season that's how it works i went i wanted i wanted to go and do 200 million but unfortunately it wouldn't let me i it could only do like 116 million max uh, per season so uh, with that in mind let's go and take a look at the maltese league maltese premier league there we are this is the teams that uh, that are going to be getting this 100 million pounds now it doesn't actually go into effect until next season as you can see they're semi-professional we've got somebody here with 65,000 in the bank if we take a look it's usually Bika Kikara or whatever they're called um, they did pretty well but again 132,000 in the bank I'm going to change nothing I'm going to do nothing I'm going to literally just give them 100 million pounds every season and see what that does for their uh, league will it bring them up into the Champions League spots with that much money kicking around. Can money buy everything? I suppose that's one way you can look at it. Let's go and take a quick look then at the national club coefficients of Malta and see where they are. Well, they're right down there in 47th place. And if we look what they've actually got uh, in this first season, they've actually got pretty much similar to what San Marino and Gibraltar have got down here. Um, and or uh, San Marino and Gibraltar, of course, those getting the worst, getting the two into the first qualifying rounds. Malta have got one into the championship, uh, the Champions Cup qualifying stage one, and um, they've got three teams in the first qualifying round three. Let's also take a look as well at the rules and see exactly what happens. So there's a lot of prize money there, of course. Um, let's take a look at what happens. Results. It's not the league. That's surely not the way that it works. Who wins? Is it literally... Right, here we are. Top team qualifies for the Champions Cup. Champions first qualifying phase. Okay. It's pleased, uh, teams placed second to fourth qualify for the Euro Cup, depending on the winner of the Cup. Okay, so it's much, much closer to like it is in the English Premier League um, rather than San Marino's absolutely ridiculous system that they've got where it doesn't really matter if you've finished in the top six, you've got a chance of winning the league, uh, which to me doesn't make sense it really really doesn't make sense it seems that Valletta were the last ones to win Hibs they were also in the mix as well but Valletta seemed to be one of the biggest teams uh, in this particular thing if we go and take a look can we look at Malta Malta yeah, they're 174th in the world rankings and as you can see the major clubs are Valletta Hibernians Ber Berke oh my god Berkia Cara, Berkia Cara, I think I'm sure that is, and, and Balzan. Um, these, I would presume, are probably going to be the top four teams. We've got some big players there, and you'll see that uh, some that have got very English names, and that is, of course, because um, there's a lot of English people who live out in Malta. So I, I'm being told, I don't know if that's true, but there is a, a lot of English people who live out in uh, in Malta and have, have made a life for themselves over there. And of course, uh, their offspring have become Maltese by nationality. So there you go. But anyways, um, they've got full star of reputation, half a star for the first, second and lower divisions. I've done nothing with them, guys. Um, literally, it's just the Premier League that's going to get this money. I don't see the point in these lower leagues getting it. Um, but yeah. That's a little introduction, guys, on what this series is going to be. The main aim of this series is how far can £100 million push a league? I don't know. That's why we're finding out. Welcome back, guys. We've gone a year into the future to the 20th of June. I do like that little round number of 20th of June there. In 2017, uh, let's quickly get rid of all of these and have a look at the Maltese Premier League, just to make sure everything is going okay. I've already tested this, so it should be fine. Yeah, look at all that Wongridge right there. <laughs> right, okay, so they are currently on £80 million in the bank. Their transfer budget is £43 million. They're now a professional club, 
as you probably would expect. It's a brand new season coming up. The Hibernians actually won it last season, so they will be um, going forward and doing the old business in the Champions League. Speaking of the Champions League, let's go and take a look. It would have been Valletta. So let's go and take a look at their schedule and see how they did. So they got through the Champions Cup qualifying leg one against Trepen, actually, from San Marino, as you would expect them to. But then they completely fell apart against FC Copenhagen, as you probably would expect them to at that particular point as well. Um, so they got through to the qualifying stage of uh, uh, two, which is not too bad. Um, who else? Now, this is a good question. Let's take a look at the schedule. And see who, well, the Euro Cup, actually, Balls NFC uh, got through to the first qualifying round and then just fell to uh, Stebeck. Uh, Stebeck? Stebeck? I don't know how you pronounce that. But um, it was them, so that was Balzan. Uh, did Burkiakara? Berki they did. They actually went against Kukese and won. They got through to the next stages, uh, but lost, unfortunately, to, uh, to Maribor. Um, who else would it have been? Not you. It shouldn't take too long to be able to find these. How on earth do you predict Jazeera? Is that how you pronounce that? Hamrun. I'll see it. The Hibs, they were in the first, unfortunately lost to away goals to Kukurike. <laughs> what a name that is. Kukurike. Um, lost to them, which is unfortunate. And I think that was it, wasn't it? Moster. Not you. Pembroke. They've got some really weird uh, weird names, and like English names as well, like Hibernians, for instance. Um, not Peter. Singala. Nope, not him. Uh, not them. Not them, but they are through to this one this time around. I should be taking notes of this so that I can find them easier when it comes around to next season. I will do that, actually. And uh, it was Valletta, I think they were the last ones. Oh, no. Vitoroi, Vit, Vittoriosa, not them, and then we're back to uh, to Balzan. Um, so there we go. Uh, they didn't manage to really do anything in the uh, in the European Champions League or or the uh, Europa League either. Let's take a look. Maltese Premier League. Where do we look? And I should have. There we go. Look the transfers. So. There's much going on here uh, for free. <laughs> There's more going on here for free than there is actual money. But again, literally, they just got their big, big money through. So I would expect some massive, massive transfers to go through. Um, I would also think that Hibernians will probably go and spend quite a lot of their money to strengthen their side. We'll have to find out. I mean, look at all this. There is so many frees on here. It's crazy. And then one single transfer there. 62,000 from Valletta to Lokomotiva. So big, big money going into the team there. But yeah, there you go. Not massive amounts going on, really. It's mainly going from... Um, actually, no. From Balzan to uh, Silema there... What's happened to also the uh, the league? So they were in 117th, they've gone up to 113th. Again, I don't think much has changed this season. We'll go to 2018 and see what happens there. It's June 2018, another year into the future. How are Malta doing? Let's go and take a look. So the Maltese Premier League. Um, has absolutely smashed up to 104th now, so they are improving uh, overall. The league is improving, certainly. Hibernians actually winning once again. Um, by the looks of things, I don't know if they've actually got some players in. They've got a few foreign ones going on there, but let's take a look at their senior squad and see how they've done. So they went through against Cosmos, uh, which is good, actually. They're another San Marino's uh, League <laughs> team. Um and unfortunately lost against Les, uh, Lech Poznan, who are very difficult to get past anyway, as I know from my San Marino days. Um, but they, they, they didn't do too bad, 2-0 and 1-0. It wasn't that bad, to be honest. Um, let me take a quick look and see how they did. Oh, it wasn't you. I was going to write this down, and I should have done. Uh, they actually went through the uh, the first round unfortunately lost against Ye uh, Yeblanek 
no idea. But it was so close, it was close. Um, unfortunately, didn't manage to get that. Burkia Kara, they wasn't in that one. They weren't in that. Hibs, of course, have just done them. Um, Moster, no, it wasn't you. Pembroke, it wasn't you either. Peter, Peter picked a piece of pickle, pick, 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 pepper. Wasn't you? Wasn't you? Who the heck? Who else? Oh, they got absolutely smashed in the first round against Olympia. St Andrews, was it you? No. Taxian. Some new ones, of course, because promotion, relegation, all that sort of stuff. They actually lost on away goals against uh, Gerbauge. I think that is pronounced, which is unfortunate for Valletta, but never mind. And then we're back to uh, to Balzan again. Um, so yeah, uh, didn't exactly do that fantastic when it came around to the European Cups, but they did slightly better than they've done before. So okay, let's take a look at the Maltese Premier League and then take a look at the transfers uh, for this particular season. Go it well, there we go. Okay. This is a little bit different. Let's have a look. The biggest one was uh, Llewellyn Cremona, who actually went from Valletta to Taxian. Taxian are in the Maltese Premier League, by the way, guys. Um, Ryan Skikuluna. These are all into, like, going from one Maltese team to another. Xera United. And these, are, I think these are the new ones, the new teams that have come up. One's from Pembroke there to Valletta. What about coming out from the outside of these uh, particular leagues? I don't think there is one. Most, uh, Moster, Balzan, they're all pretty much inter-league. There's nothing really going on from outside. It's a free, uh, free transfers there. Yeah, they're, they're on pretty, they're pretty much every single one here is from Malta to Malta. There isn't any, you know, massive league teams going on here. And I think that's because maybe I've maybe it's because I've only got Malta loaded. Um, that could be an issue. I am not sure. I might have to test that out and go a few seasons into the future and see what happens. Um, maybe that's... There's no manager movements anywhere. Um, what about this season so far? Well, we've got one here um, from Taxian. Again, oh, Victor... Oh no, that's Maltese as well. Karendi, yeah, they are also Maltese. Kerchem, also Maltese. I wonder if it's because I've literally only got Malta loaded. That could be an issue. If that is the fact, I might have to go in and add, uh, you know, England, um, uh, France, Italy, Germany, you know, those sorts of ones, so we can get some different movements going on here. But at the moment, that is seems to be it. Let's just take a look. The Maltese Premier League. Um, but Kiyakara, how much money have they got at this moment? Is that 100 million? 144 million. So they're definitely saving this money. And look at the amount of transfer budget they have. They're really not spending any of that, um, which is which is bad, <laughs> I suppose, which is bad. We might have to go in, like I said, and just add a few leagues in so that the um, so that Malta, so these Maltese teams have somebody to buy something off. But at the moment, let's go and take a look at what they're doing in Europe and their coefficients. Uh, Malta, where are you? They're in 44th at the moment. Did they go up or down? I think they might have gone. Oh, they've gone up because they've got one in the uh, the qualify, uh, qualifying stages uh, two, the second qualifying stages. So straight into qualifying two, and of course you've still got the three in the first qualifying. Nothing changes again until uh, up here, which is the twenty sixth, and you've still got the qualifying stages round two. But you've also got the second qualifying stages and two teams into the first qualifying stage rather than that way around. Um, but the next massive change really comes here when you get to 15th which is the qualifying stage best place quarter third round basically um, and then the qualifying stage round three so you get another second team in the uh, in the Champions League and then again when you hit the 12th position you've got one in immediately straight into the group stage um, which is good which is good, but again, nothing really happening at this moment in time just buying people uh, from 
other Maltese teams. I don't know if it'll change next year, but we'll give it a try. It's the 31st of May 2019 and I've stopped it here guys because I want to see if anything has changed with the Maltese Premier League. Let's go and take a quick look at the transfers then and see. Um, so it looks still like it is uh, Malta to Malta. Um, just taking a quick look. Apart from this one, Sao Carlos, um, part of the Brazilian National Lower Division. So maybe it's just the fact that they're just buying off other Maltese teams. I don't think that... What's that? Call me? Yep, they're Maltese. So I'm going to try something anyway, guys. I think that this is a good time to do it. Not that one. Uh, add and remove leagues. Okay, we're going to go and add the league. This time, we're going to stick and we're going to go to England. Um, I say the Premier Division. Can we add more than that? Europe. England. Championship, Europe, England, League 1, Europe, England, League 2. I think we'll leave it there. So I'm going to add in these, and I want to see if it makes a big difference. Uh, the reason why I did it now is because, of course, it's coming up to 25th of the 6th, 2019. So it will get added for this season. We're going to go ahead and confirm that. Um, it will cause more time of course for it to be uh, simulated but that'd be absolutely fine um let's go and take a look at the mall oops maltese premier league and see what has actually been happening so it seems as if the relegation i mean i don't mind relegation playoffs i think that's a, a good thing to do but let's have a look at the uh the league table again hibs have won it. Hibernians have won it. Um, they've done really well. They were the ones who actually qualified for the Champions League. So they won the first one against Aberystwyth, which is great. Unfortunately, then lost the second one against uh, Zilina from the Slovak First Division. Again, that's okay. Uh, I suppose, give it a few seasons, they probably will improve. Um, we just need that the Maltese reputation to improve along with that, but Bakia Kara, they went into the Euro Cup, unfortunately lost in the second qualifying round. Uh, Floriana, there's another one, they went through. Well, no, they, they'd lost their first match 3-0, then they won 3-2, which was uh, disappointing for them. But still, Apoel Nicosia uh, going through there. And then the last one was Pembroke, who won their first game, but unfortunately could not win the return leg against Dundalk, so they went out of that particular uh, cup there. So, anyways, Maltese has gone up to 104th. Again, it's not really the end of the season, so it, it's not showing you if it's gone up or down. 117th, 113th, 104th. Um, if I went forwards one day, it might actually show us... I think it starts again in June. I could be completely wrong there. Maltese Premier League. No, it doesn't start again in June, which is unfortunate. But either which way, never mind. Um, and we'll go ahead and we'll skip forwards to June. I will take a quick note of who it is uh, in the Euro Cup and the Champions League. And then what we'll do is we'll skip forward once again uh, another year into the future to see whether or not people will move, will move from those uh, activated le leagues in England. If that works, then I'll go ahead and slip in a few more from the Spanish, maybe the German as well, and the Italian, and see what happens going forwards. Maybe it'll help Malta out, who knows. Okay, one last update before I end this episode, but we're now in 2020. The Maltese Premier League has risen from 96th to 84th, which is pretty good. It's getting up there, guys. The only issue, I mean, Hibs is just in control of this league, absolutely in control of it so far. Uh, let's take a quick look at how they have been doing. So last time, they, they lost on away goals in the qualifying uh, second round, which is disappointing. Uh, but what can you do? Also, Balzan. Let's go and take a look at what they did last season. Well, they got through the first qualifying round, but unfortunately lost to Gothenburg, who always seemed to be the team that you come across in the second qualifying round, which is disappointing. Um, Bukia Kara was the other one. They lost in the first round, disappointing again. And Floriana, who are there. 
They drew their first game but lost against Dacia in the second round, uh, in the second leg, unfortunately. But there you go. So they're not doing very well when it comes to uh, the European sides. Uh, but there you go. Never mind. The only issue that I'm seeing with this, guys, if we take a look at the transfers, it's still all pretty much uh, Maltese. I mean, even adding those English leagues hasn't done anything to this. It's a shame. What can you do? I can't really do anything else at this moment in time. This is what this season so far has brought. I will leave England's leagues in for yet another season. And if they don't get bought, or if there's nobody, no team, if if they're not, you know, buying from England, I really don't see the point in um, in adding England. I think I'll just get rid of England and then go forwards with Malta and see what happens in you know five, ten years' time or something like that. But at the moment, nothing much is happening. The Maltese Premier League is slowly moving up in reputation, which is good. Which is good. We want this to get even higher and higher and higher and higher. I think an experiment like this might be better with a side that is um, with a uh, sorry a country that. Well, let's take a quick look. I think it would do better. Would an experiment like this with a team that are pretty much hanging around this area? So maybe Austria, Turkey, Ukraine, Belgium, Russia, and Holland. All of these might be a decent um, nation to do this sort of experiment with. Maybe even Denmark, Poland and Greece, who don't necessarily have the immediate group stage in there, but can build on that. I have no idea, but we'll have to see. We will have to see. Anyway, guys, that is going to be it for the end of this first episode. If you've got any suggestions or anything like that, please do put them in the comment section below, and I will get to them as soon as I possibly can. I do hope you're enjoying this new series, and uh, fingers crossed, we'll see how Malta improves. Now, Malta at the moment, they're up in 38th, so they are slowly improving on their uh, coefficients as well, which is not bad. But we need to get them further up the team, uh, further up this, this thing here. For that, they need results. For that, they need to get better teams. To figure better teams, they need to buy better players. It's simple as that, and they're not doing that at this moment in time. But with the reputation of the league going up, hopefully that will come. But until next time, guys, I've been the Softman. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, stay safe.